Welcome to episode 34 of the LWJGL tutorial series, in which I'm going to be covering per pixel lighting as opposed to per vertex lighting. So in episode 26, the shader tutorial, we created per vertex lighting shaders. And what this means is that the light intensity was calculated for every vertex. What you're seeing right now on screen, that's per vertex lighting. What happens when I do per pixel lighting is, well, see for yourself. Boom! Looks much nicer, doesn't it? Yeah, that's because the light intensity is now calculated for every pixel on this mesh, instead of for every vertex. Okay, so again, difference. This is per vertex. This is per, per pixel, or per fragment. From a distance, there isn't a real difference, because relatively, the, verti the vertices are a lot closer to each other. So are the pixels. So... Let's go to the code. What I've done is taken the code from episode 26 and put it in a new class called per pixel lighting. You can find this source code in the source code repository linked to in the video description. Now I also have two shader files right here, pixel fong lighting dot vertex shader and pixel fong lighting dot fragment shader. And these contain the source code for our per fragment uh, or per pixel lighting. So, I'm going to get rid of this source code because I'm going to write it myself as most of you prefer that way of teaching. And I am going to use the the old lighting system, so the per vertex lighting system, as a reference. I'm going to start with the vertex shader. So, I'm going to split the view vertically. By the way, this is the new version of the IntelliJ IDE. I really, really recommend you check it out. It's version 12, and um, I think it looks a lot nicer now. Okay. There we go. So, the vertex shader. What do we need to change? Not a whole lot, not a whole lot uh, fortunately. The only thing we really need to do is get rid of the... Um, calculation code in the vertex shader and move it to the fragment shader and also uh, pass the normal and the color of the vertex to the fragment shader. Note that these these uh, values will be interpolated that means that OpenGL sort of guesses what's in between if you have three vertices and there's a point in the middle then it um, guesses where that has to be but it, it's not perfect. It's not like you're making up some brilliant, uh, perfect mathematical shape or anything. No, this is just plain old interpolation. Okay. The vertex shader. I am going to pass the color into the fragment shader, which I already did before, see? So nothing there has changed. I call it varying color. And I'm also going to pass the normal and the vertex into the, into the fragment shader. Now we still need to assign these varying variables but I'll get to that in a minute. So the normal which only needs three dimensions because it's a normal and not a, a vertex. The vertex only needs three, two but well for normals it's more usual that you only use three components instead of four. Then varying vec for varying vertex. And these two lines, they differ from the original shader. Okay. Now the entry point. Oops. There. Okay, I am going to set the varying color to gl underscore color. Oop, that's not British spelling. And I'm also going to pass the normal and the vertex To the fragment shader. I'm going to assign the varying variables which we're going to use in the fragment shader later on. So varying vertex, gl underscore vertex, and gl underscore position is, well, this is the same as, as before. Yeah, this. So really the only thing we do in the vertex shader is assign the varying variables for the fragment shader and output the vertex position. 
Easy, isn't it? Okay, now the fragment shader. Let's have a look. We need that one, and we need that one. Actually, no, we need the vertex shader. Well, we need both, but um, I want the lighting calculation. So I'm going to use the vertex shader because in the per vertex shader, that was what you had in. Well, it was the lighting calculation in the vertex shader, not the fragment shader. By the way, a pixel is the same as a fragment. Fragment shaders are also often referred to as pixel shaders, usually when you're using Direct3D, which is Microsoft's equivalent of OpenGL. Okay, what was I doing? Yes, vertex shader. Split view. Okay. So, let's get to business. Uh, the fragment shader. Now we have to redefine our varyings. So varying vec4 varying color. Varying vec3 varying normal. And varying vec4 varying vertex. It would really suck if the audio were off. On my microphone. Oh, it isn't. <laughs> Lucky me. So, the entry point. And now come the lighting calculations. So, first, the light position. I'm not really going to uh, explain this code a whole lot because I already explained it in episode 26 and I don't want to repeat myself. And I'm lazy. Partially. A bit. Maybe. <laughs> Now the surface normal. Uh, this is basically the same code as here, but we can't access these vertex attributes because you can only access them in the vertex shader, and that's why we pass them to the fragment shader. So now we want the surface normal. We can still access GL underscore normal matrix because that's a uniform. And the light direction. I really hope I don't mess this up by making a spelling mistake and spending 10 minutes of this video trying to find out what the mistake was. Ah, okay, so again, the fixed function OpenGL um, lighting. You can also replace these light source things, these lighting uniforms, with your own by using uh, your custom uniforms and that way you won't have to use the fixed function OpenGL lighting you can use more than eight lights which is the limit for OpenGL unfortunately at least for the fixed function pipeline um, ah, light direction ah, I'll just copy this you can skip ahead probably because I'm not going to be telling anything important Now for the diffuse light intensity, I think I can just copy that line as well. Now I have to assign the fragment color. So gl underscore frag color dot RGB is diffuse light intensity times varying color on RGB and gl underscore frag color is plus gl underscore light normal dots ambient the ambient lights and then some difficult lighting code which I am not going to explain I'll probably just copy this yep And I, I can probably copy this as well, but I have to change this to gl underscore frag color. Yeah, that should work. 
So, actually, that should be it. Although I'm not really sure this works, so let's try it out with our demonstration code and then try it out with the, the shader demo code. Nope, doesn't work. Too bad. Okay. Ah, let's have a look at what went wrong. The fragment shader. Okay. That was to be expected. I copied too much code. Line 35. We should replace that with varying vertex because we don't have access to vary, uh, gl underscore vertex. Vertex position. Yeah, okay. These errors are all created because an, a previous error was created. Is that better? Nope, still doesn't work. No matching function, that's a bit old, I guess. Yeah, that isn't supposed to be that way, I guess. <laughs> Wait, what's wrong? Ah. Maybe this? It's episode. No, 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 it was 938. There, this should work, I guess. Please work. Nope. <laughs> well, this is normal. It always happens. Okay. Oh, no, I can't see the left. Ah, there we go. Line 43. Only one hour to go. I hope. Ah, see, what I did was I probably went on Windows and there these shaders compiled correctly, but now they don't because... Uh, on Windows, for some reason, I had uh, the the syntax checking was more lenient, and I could just put an integer here instead of a float, and it would recognize it. But now it doesn't. Ooh, so there's a possibility every single bit of shader code I've written on Windows won't work on Mac because I hope not. <laughs> oh, it works. So, vertex pixel. Yeah, high five. Virtual high five. Why wow, you can't see my face anyway. Hmm. Okay, so. Now the only thing we need to do is go to our original code that we stole from episode 26 and change this into pixel form lighting. And then run the file and admire our shaders yeah it looks a bit different from from the other code but that's probably because I set some other lighting attributes a bit differently ah beautiful isn't it I never get tired of the chocolate bunny <laughs> okay you can find the source code in the source code repository aside from that I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'm out Bye.